The proof of the pie is in the eating, okay? Don't believe you have eaten any pie until you can taste it and it goes down your stomach. Because a lot of people are satisfied with illusions. And I don't want people to be satisfied with illusions. When you look at the real nature of the world, the way that it's projected is actually an illusion. It's not how it works. We think that all of our problems are written in stone and we can't fix it. And that's really a wrong way of thinking. That is the illusion. That's the problem. When people understand that that's the illusion that they have to break, that the world itself is quite problem-free, if only they knew how to use it. Okay. So when you invent a big piece of technology and then you give it to a dumb person, they will not be able to use it. Okay. So that's what has exactly happened with human beings. And it's a cycle. Ignorance is a cycle when all the teachings and the teachers get wiped out. And then they come back, just like the sun. It goes all the way south and today is Shankranti and it's coming back. Okay. So in the same way, we are at the Shankranti of knowledge right now, where, where people have to, have to start understanding the illusion yeah. in which they live, which is really created with the ignorance that they've been fed and then move on into living a life that makes sense and that is divine and that is magical. That's exactly what today's talk is all about. So, welcome to the spiritual jungle. For those of you who don't know me, who are watching this on YouTube, my name is Guru Pashupati. I'm the Parampara Adhikari of Triloka Khara, which is a heavy title because it's a heavy responsibility. And my Akhada has invested me with the power to be able to translate and uh, to um, even create new knowledge, translate ancient texts and be able to create new knowledge that is applicable for the world today. The world of Kriya Yoga has to undergo a revolution because what is being practiced now is like MBBS. People in MBBS are still studying a syllabus that was made in 1885. And in the same way, we are studying in yoga, Kriya Yoga, a syllabus made in 18-something, which was handed to Lahari Mahasaya by my guru. And we need to update. Things have changed since 1885. If you try to apply those teachings now, you won't be able to because you just don't even have the capacity to. This is called Ghor Kali Yoga. Okay? It gets worse and worse. Human beings, the quality of human beings drops a lot okay? because of ignorance. And when, when knowledge starts to rise again in the world, for Guru's cause. So that was my job, is my job, and it will be my job until there are more Gurus who can teach real stuff. Like, what is the world really about? And that's the most interesting question because that builds a frame of who you are. So what is the world really about? I don't understand this. And what do our our uh, texts say about it? What do the Tantric texts say about it? What do the Puranas say about it? And what do the Vedas say about it? They're all pretty consistent with one thing, that Nirguna Brahman or the formless God dreamed up the Saguna Brahman or the God with form. The God with form is considered feminine. And the God with no form is considered Masculine, Shiva and Shakti. If you go by other other darshanas, some have called it Purusha and Prakriti. Okay, darshana means philosophy. In the yogic philosophy, oh. yoga borrows its philosophy from Sankhya, which calls it Purusha and Prakriti. But the yogi is decided that that sounds unsexy. So they called it Shiva and Shakti. Okay. 
and we do understand that everything that has form around you is now Shakti. And when we understood that, Shakti began to communicate with us in human form. And that is the beauty of it. Teachings began to come into the world of people from the world of spirit. And there were avatars. The formless one took the avatar of Shiva. And also the formless or the multi-formed one, Shakti is the multi-formed one, she took a human female form and we call her Devi. Okay? So, Devi is the female form. When we say Devi, it refers to Shakti. But when we say Devas, they refer to angels. They are not God. Okay? But God is both Saguna and Nirguna. Nirguna means does not have Rajas, Tamas or Sattva. Means it doesn't have to worry about time. It's out of time. No space, no time. There is no activity which can only happen in space and across time, which is Rajas. And there is no Tamas which can also happen. There's, tamas is a lack of activity across time. And Sattva is the timing of applying Rajas and Tamas, knowing when to be Rajasik and when to be Tamasik. is Sattva, which is another Guna. These are the three Gunas or the three attributes which everything in the world has. It has Rajas, Sattva and uh, sorry, Rajas, Tamas and Sattva. It has all the three. Okay? Even a drop of water. When you put the drop of water on a slope, it has got Rajas. It moves down. When it reaches the bottom of the slope, it's tamasic. And it knows when to do which. So that's the sattva in it. Sattva is the knowledge of when to do which. If the water became still on top of the slope, then we would not get water supply. Because it's uh, the water from the Kaveri comes to my house along a slope. Nobody's pumping it. Okay? I mean, they are pumping it at various points where there's no slope. But where there's no slope, uh, where there is a slope, they're just letting the water go. Okay? So the environment should control Rajas and Tamas. But here what's happening is that we have a layer over our environment which controls our Rajas and Tamas. And that is our overlap into the world of Shakti. That is the beauty that we are going to create. It's like a motherboard. Okay, Shakti is like a motherboard and you can create any circuit in it. And that circuit creation is up to us, the jiva, who are something like Nirguna Brahman. Our nature is like Nirguna Brahman, which is why Shankaracharya exclaimed, Aham Shiva, um, Shivoham, I'm sorry, Aham Brahmasmi and Shivoham were exclamations by Shankaracharya when he understood that he is exactly like God. In the terms that we can also excite Saguna Brahman. We can also create a Saguna Brahman of our own. That is called Maya. Our personal Saguna Brahman is called Maya. And the universal Saguna Brahman is called Mahamaya. And depends on your personality how much you can control. How much of this can you actually control? Depends on your personality. If your personality is big, then you can control a lot. The personality is introverted and small, like a mouse. Then you can control whatever a mouse can control. If you want to control things like a god can control, then you need to have personality like a god. If you want the elements to listen to you, then you have to have the personality of the god, because the god is Indra, our senses. The leader of the gods is Indra. Indra also conveniently means senses. Why? Because it's true. Senses are God. Where we focus our senses, that's what we create. We have to be very careful where we focus our senses. If you focus it on tragedy, then your whole life will be tragic. If you focus it on a tragedy that happened to you forever, that's called trauma. Where you focus your senses is all up to you, really. Don't say that this is automatic. You have not gained control like a God. You have let everything run loose. So then your senses can't focus on the right place. Okay. 
So if you want to live a personality like a bird, you need to build your senses and you start you need to start becoming aware of the many things that you learn in Siddha Yoga. Some of you are learning Siddha Yoga. Okay? Some of you are not learning, you are only listening to the podcast. It's okay. But those who are learning Siddha Yoga cannot afford to behave like someone who is not learning Siddha Yoga. You have tools. Every Adhara I teach you is a meditation. And if you bring that Adhara out into real life, you will see so many differences. Starting with the Padangusta, if you learn that meditation and you start being able to spread the flame of the Padangusta into every part of your body, it is the fire of Kalaratri that creates complete renewal. In whatever you put it on, this is the power that Siddhas have to renew stuff. What would you renew? Now you have this great massive power to start afresh. Just by learning the first day of my 64 day challenge. And imagine in 64 days what you learn, okay? It's crazy, right? But as you're learning this, you go about life as if you're attending an online yoga TTC. That's how you go about your life. Like nothing magical happened. There's absolutely nothing more stupid than to find Siddha Yoga and behave like an ordinary person. I find it amazing that the best we want to apply Siddha Yoga for is to not feel stress. Why don't you want to feel stress? You have to feel vibhatsa, you have to feel disgusted by something and you have to go ahead and change that environment and that's the game that Shakti wants us to play. But what are you doing? Get comfortable. I feel better. Before meeting Guruji, I was completely mental and now I'm not completely mental. I'm better than the normal person. You came to Siddha Yoga to be better than the normal person or be a Siddha. That's way better than a normal person. A Siddha is a mountain and a normal person is a grain of dust in the way they behave and the way they respond to situations and their connection with nature is nothing. They just isolated themselves with their ego and they don't want to interact with anything else other than the thoughts in their mind. They don't have any real friends. They're thinking about what their friend said. They don't have any real interactions at all. So, if you want to be a slightly better ordinary person, then you don't need Siddha Yoga. Just you need some sun and you need to put orange glasses on your nose as soon as the sun goes down. This much if you do, you'll be better than any normal person. Because you're not being exposed to so much blue light, you'll actually have some brains. It will work. Otherwise, you have to go and get a copper skin like me. If you want to increase that, go and get a copper skin like me. Where do you do? Where can I buy this on Amazon? Where can I buy this spray? To make myself copper. This is not a spray. <laughs> this is my skin. Okay, because I sit in the sun all the time, naked. So I don't have like I don't have tan lines. Okay. This is what I, I managed to do. Because it's really important. Getting sun on your skin. If you just do that one thing, you'll be feeling better. But did you come here to only learn that one thing? Or did you come here to learn something more? That's the frame. Who are you? The frame questions are who are you? Okay. After getting Siddha Yoga, you cannot continue with the same who am I. You have to say I'm a Siddha in training. So when you shift to this kind of a spiritual magic frame, then what happens is who's the other person? A challenge. Most of the time. That's how I look at it. People call me with various challenges from I'm in love with you to um, my child committed suicide. Okay, various different challenges keep being presented by the people around me and also with the people whom I'm coaching to become Siddha Gurus, they also have challenges one after the other. So I'm dealing with those challenges. What am I doing? I'm using magical tools. I'm not doing it using logic. I'm not doing it using NLP. I'm not doing it using uh, law of manifestation of abundance of healing or whatever the hell that is. Okay? There's just so many methods. Reiki and that and this. I'm not doing it like that. I'm using the tools given by Gorakshnath which I teach to you openly and so many times. Even recently I put up a video about how to knock 
your negative thoughts off of your timeline into the blazing fire of your Manipura chakra and then it gets burned. Go and watch it. It's on, it's on YouTube. It's called How Not to Be Your Own Obstacle. Okay. So, when you have such a magical tool, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to change about your history and your future? <laughs> play with it. That one tool, if you sit and play with it for a month, you'll be so clean. You'll have cleaned up a lot of the who am I confusion because you'll have a clear line, a timeline of a being that is here to do things that are challenging and make themselves proud of what they've achieved because it was a challenge. You didn't come here to do non-challenging things which you know how it's going to end. A thing is not a challenge when you know how it's going to end. There's nothing challenging about it. Everybody knows how their life is going to end, death. What's challenging about it? You can do it as well as Bill Gates. That's the challenge. The challenge is immortality. The challenge is healing faster than you, de you damage yourself. So be very aware how you damage yourself and be very aware how you heal yourself. Do more of the healing and do less of the damage. Do you have this acute awareness, this intellectual curiosity to find out what are the things you do that are damaging and what are the things you do that are not damaging? And what are the things that you do that are healing? There are three categories of actions. Which one do you keep choosing? Be, be very careful what you choose. Because if you're not, you end up dead. It's really a matter of life and death. Really a matter of life and death. You are going to die if you heal less than you damage yourself. Such a profound teaching. Is it reaching anyone? I don't know. People hear this and they go about like they didn't hear it. The next moment you see them doing something else. I'm amazed. I'm astonished. I'm appalled and disgusted by the amount of apathy you have towards your own lives. Which translates into apathy, with a global apathy that people have. You don't care how you feel. You're ready to throw away your good feelings in a second over something. How? Just how? It boggles my mind. I have no idea how you do that. But the truth is that you have to stop doing that. That's the only way you're going to go to the next level of living in a magical universe with the play of Shakti that we call Leela. You will become playful like her. You will become playful. And I think Mahadev is also very playful. Absolutely playful being. God. Absolutely playful being. Okay, So you've got to play around. You've got to roll with the blows. You've got to do stuff and then see how far can your will coordinate and ride on the waves of Shakti's will. Shakti's will is like waves on the ocean. Your will is like a windsurfer. You're in there. And you're, you're sensing Shakti's will. And you're like, no, I don't want this. I'm going to change that. And then you're going against it. You're like the salmon that goes upstream by using the way that Shakti is flowing. Shakti is constantly renewing herself. She makes herself new every day. And she makes herself new in you every day. Every, every phase of the moon. Okay, That's where on this planet Shakti renews herself. She has different cycles in in uh, different planets. There are different beings in different planets who have different cycles. But on the earth, Shakti follows the cycles of the moon in our body. And we have to be aware of it. And we are not in sync with that cycle. But we need to understand what way the wave is going before we can ride it. We have to really understand this. So you say, I'm really understanding this magic. What have you brought me into? What is this thing? Experience it. Feel it. Understand where you are stuck in your life right now. And you're like, oh, it's just me. You know? Someone went to a doctor and he said, when I turn my hand like this, hand like this, and bend it like this, it pains. And the doctor said, why the hell are you doing it? 
Why are you bending your hand like this? Yeah. Like, but doctor, when I bend it like this, it pains. It's a disorder. That's the yogic diagnosis, okay? There was a meme. There's a boot that's stomping a child's face into the ground in the first frame. And then you zoom out and the child's hand is inside the boot, stomping his own face. This is exactly what all of you do when you say you have problems. Doctor, when I bend like this and like this and like this, it really pains. Yeah, it's supposed to pain because it's a wrong way to use your bloody hand. That's why. So when you realize you've been using your powers the wrong way, then you wake up and say, what, what, wait, every problem is me using my powers the wrong way. So that it already implies that you have powers. And then you'll get on a search to find them. What, what's the right way to use this power? And what is the sp this power? What am I doing? That's when you'll discover who you are. When you ask yourself, how did I create my mess? You're already thinking like a creator. But when you think the world is a mess, you are. You are. Oh my God. I forgot to mute you guys. Okay. Yeah, so when you do that, you are saying, Shakti, you're a bitch. <laughs> Every time you complain about the world, that's what you're saying. And Shakti is like, is that so? What is, how much is, what's the weight of your balls to be able to say that? Okay, I want to know. How is it so heavy? I don't know the balls to say that. I think it takes a lot of ego to be able to say there's something wrong with the world. It takes a lot of ego to do that, okay? So you need to participate and understand the way, which way is going. I was going this way. You don't get disgusted by the world. You get disgusted by the structures we have made on the world which are completely out of sync with nature. And then we constantly suffer. We created a structure where people need not get sun, need not touch the earth for years if they want. It's possible for someone to not touch the earth and not get sun with their, touch the earth with their bare feet or hands. And you can do this for years. Meanwhile, your life is in shambles because the thing that is required for learning is the blue light, is, is the absence of blue light after sunset and a lot of sunlight. That's what you really need for learning. It produces melatonin. And me melatonin is a neurotransmitter that's very important for healing, okay? <laughs> a lot of research is being done on it now. Some of it is being done by one of our students into melatonin. He's a researcher. He just joined my program. So... We understand that melatonin is something that's primary in learning. I've seen it from practical observation. I don't want to wait for the research. When I see people wearing those orange glasses, getting enough sleep, I suddenly see their intelligence level is going up. Suddenly they're doing better things. You all saw it. Whoever's using those orange glasses has seen the difference. And yet people are very... Uh, flippant about applying this strictly in their life. They make exceptions for themselves as if their eyes have suddenly changed and they don't, they don't get affected by the blue light anymore. That's what people think. I'm a performer. Nothing will affect me. I can go stand in bright lights in the night. Why the hell are all performances at night? Earlier, they would do it under the moonlight. But where do you have the moonlight? You have the brightest day. I went to a rock concert. It's brightest day. In the night. That's not what I want. That's not us huddling together around a fire like our ancestors. It's not the same thing. Feel free to huddle around a fire and share your music. What the hell is this? I don't understand. 
I, I would never go to any of those things. So somebody invited me to their recital and I didn't go. So I told him the truth that I, I go to bed at 7.30. I'm sorry, your performance starts at 7. And it's going to be under blue light, so not me. So he said, I'll listen to you on YouTube. So that's what it is. And you've got to be careful what you listen to, man. Uh, in the previous talk, I, I talked about spiritual emotions. And the only rasa that I see people make songs about heartbreak, um, what I call simp attraction, okay? Ye chansa, raushan, chehra, zul, funka, ran, sunehra, etc., etc. It's like, it's not the kind of attention that is sexy for a woman, okay? So, but then there are a lot of these simp attention songs. And then you've got women's empowerment songs, boss bitch songs. And then you've got men's empowerment songs, like Bitch Don't Steal My Wife. And then you've got... What is this crap we keep singing? And suddenly somebody sings something from Bulesha or Kabir or something and nobody knows what it means. Something good. They pick it up. But they don't understand the rasa behind what is being, being taught there. And they turn it into something. It just becomes an excursion into, I don't know what. Nobody knows why they're putting anything anywhere. Like, man, art is in a really sad state because the, the range of emotions an artist feels is very, very kachda. Like, extremely low-grade low emotions. They're not feeling anything high. So they're not creating anything that is magnificent. So very few people are able to do that. I mean, there are people who can do that, like, Masters like A.R. Rahman are able to move and produce music for any kind of thing by listening to it. I mean, by by getting into the role. But even that is limited. Even that has so much social restrictions. You can't sing about anything. And the rest is rebellion, okay? Everybody else's music is just rebellion. Where's the divine music? The divine music sounds like crying. Have you listened to it? It just sounds like crying most of the time. And sometimes it's so subdued, there's no emotion. It's just neutral. They call it Shanta Rasa and they want to make it Shanta. Okay? So please don't become Shanta. I mean, you, don't, you have to understand Shanta Rasa is built upon equilibrium. So it's a lot of tensions that has to be there if you want to make something Shanta. Everything has to balance out in your life. So you start thinking like a playwright and write the play of your life with some magic in it. Even Shakespeare used to put uh, spirits into his, his, his writing and his plays. Why would they do that? Why are all our itihasa, everything is magical, but you are struggling with your finances, your marriage, your kids and your health and your in-laws. This is all you have to struggle with. You don't have any better problems and your job. Oh, how can I forget? The job. Okay. This is all you have problems with. So your problems are so small because you're so small. When you get bigger, your problems get bigger. And then your enthusiasm to fix them gets bigger, you know. The bigger the foundation, the larger the building, isn't it? So the more your problems, the bigger your achievement. We need a lot of problems to achieve something big. We shouldn't shy away from them. We should be like, wow, what does Shakti bring to my plate today? And how do I navigate this? This is not the magical attitude that you have. So your frame is wrong. That's why when I tried explaining frame, nobody got it. They got it intellectually, what a frame is. Who am I? With whom am I? What am I? What are we doing together? And what's the environment like? Yes, okay, those are like leading questions, but you really need to understand the frame of yourself as a magical being who's capable of changing things with the hundreds of energy techniques you've already learned from me. Do you have a list of all of them? Are you putting them to good use? Do you know what each one is for? You're like a warrior with so many weapons. What are you doing with it? 
Isn't it crazy? In the Yoga Siddha course, I taught 13 weapons that you can use for anything. And in the Mahasiddha course, I taught so many weapons, like frames and uh, lots of stuff, including how to make a cash flow. I taught all these weapons. But how many people actually applied it? Few. Few have applied it. Divya applied it, Shivani applied it, and then we saw a lot of results, right? The rest of you have been busy with your small frames. You haven't shifted your frame into a divine frame, you know. There are a few more applying it. My whole team is applying it now. So, slowly we have to start applying it. <laughs> All of this wonderful knowledge we're getting to do what? We get sitting in the sun and then producing melatonin, looking like a bronze god and then what? Not for nothing. There's a purpose for everything. It's what you want to do. Disgust gives you purpose. You never get disgusted with Devi saying, look at the situation. You never get disgusted with the situation. You get disgusted with the choices that you have right now. You get disgusted with what? Your choices. You have three to four choices. You have to be disgusted with all of them except one. All of them should be downright disgusting for you. If you say that, oh, that's all right, that's okay, that's 85%, and this is 86%, I can't decide between the 86 and the 85. Yeah, obviously, if you represent it like that, you can't decide. But why is it 85? Be disgusted with that 15%, which is not good. Be disgusted with that 14% that's not good. Then you'll make a decision that I can't take either of these, I need a new choice. That is 100%. Why do we settle for a less than 100% choice? Anything. From a house to a partner to where to work. Why are we settling for less than 100%? Because we're ignorant. We hope things will work out without any effort by us. And we're just too full of optimism. So much positive thinking. That's the problem. Even when shit hits the roof, you're like, oh, that's uh, added some color to my room. And some smells, aromas. Okay? Like, shit has hit the fan. Oh, nice aroma. Nice color. Nice texture. So warm. If you do that, then you'll remain there. You won't clean it up. You're like, man, this is disgusting. When you feel that's disgusting, then you'll clean it up. Okay? And my life is alright, except there's just some warm way stuff in my room and uh, just smells a lot and disturbs my sleep sometimes, but it's okay. This is most people in a bad relationship, bad job. You're not disgusted by your choices. So you're not making new choices. You have to get disgusted by the half-hearted attempts of yours. And when you become full hearted, then you're going to attend, you're going to attract brave hearts to work with you because that's that's the call you'll be making, right? That's the shouting you'll be doing. That's the conversation you'll be having with everyone. Cut them off, get them to the point, fix their shit, make them worthy of being in your society. If they can't, then they get out. Go be unworthy somewhere else, not in front of me. That's called being disgusted. Okay. Nobody has the courage to do it. Because you're not part of that magical story. So now, now we need tools, right? Once you're disgusted, you need tools for, to be able to change this whole situation. Then you'll be hungry for yoga. Oh, but that one thing you taught me, what about this other? How does that work? Oh, can I use this for that? Can I use this for this? And you'll be like, these are my problems. But you're like, yeah, problems, yeah. I've learned how not to complain. I learned how not to complain. That's my achievement. I have problems, but I don't complain. That's my achievement. It's not an achievement. This is you shutting up about what you couldn't shut up, shut up about before. That's not yoga. People are doing yoga for years and what, what are they learning? How to shut up outside. But yoga is about how to shut up inside. So when they're able to shut up outside, then they think, yeah, I've made some spiritual progress. I'm causing an ulcer inside and a tumor. But outside is so sharp. Look at my spiritual maturity. 
instead of living with these bastards. Yeah, you're like that. Okay. So you need to really snap out of it. I'm just holding a mirror to you. When you look, if you see yourself, change it. Okay. You have to tell yourself who you are. You have to sit there with Siddha tools if you're learning Siddha Yoga. Not if you're watching this on YouTube. Okay. I teach some tools on YouTube also. But if you haven't applied it, you're not a Siddha. You're nowhere near. Okay. Because the Siddha is in charge of the life. Hmm? In charge of their body, in charge of their life, in charge of their relationships, their income, their cash flow, everything. It's on top of everything. That's why they can help others. Because they're so stable, they can pull others up. Why don't you want to be one of those mountains? So that's what you have to think about and create a new frame where you're a Siddha mountain yourself. And then, you know, the way you behave will definitely change. And you ask yourself, is this the behavior of a Siddha mountain? You can ask yourself. Next time, it is stupid shit like procrastinating, learning how to make a cash flow. You ask yourself, how stupid am I? I have not mastered the basic of basic things. I don't have abundance. No. I say, wow, I got to do something about this. You got to be disgusted. Oh, it's, wow, wow, it stinks in here. You got to be disgusted by your life. That's when you make changes, okay? So, yeah. So, you work on it. I've already told you how to practice disgust. You think of a blue star here and think about that thing that you're doing with your life, your choices. <laughs> See the result of my choices. It should be pain. Okay? It's not about judging anything. It's about real pain. When there's real pain, you feel it. And then you accept it. This is shit. You have to categorize things into shit. But if you don't categorize it into shit, you'll keep adding it to your cooking every day. Because you'd have labeled it dried gober and you'll be adding it into your soup every day. It's not going to be good. Try not to eat shit, okay? Not good. And there's so much fresh new stuff. People who don't want to change, why do they eat the same shit again? Even literally, they can do it. So you don't want to change, like how can you have a new dosa? I'm going to have the same dosa that I shut out from yesterday. I'll recycle yesterday's dosa. This is what people do. They don't want any change in their life. They want everything to be the same. The 100 problems with their partner, they don't want to leave. The 200 problems with their job, they don't want to leave. They want the same thing to continue. They do nothing about it. They're not disgusted. Okay, that's all. All right? Okay. I'm sorry for all the disgusting talk, but I hope you got disgusted. If you put yourself in the shoes and this is what I'm doing. Oh, tomorrow morning, be careful when... You take the gober to mix into your life. You're like, oh, oh, I just heard about this yesterday. Don't want. Put it away. Okay. It comes in a nice box. Approved by society. It has a socially approved stamp. It says, dried gober. They'll even give you organic dried gober. I still wouldn't eat it. Okay. So don't have these gober shakes. I keep making new words like guess what? Kunal made a new one yesterday called Bhat Itihasa. So that's that's called the Bhat Itihasa. You listen to me and then say, yes, 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 Guruji, yes, but, and then you'll tell me some story, but society, something, something. And then that's called the Bhat Itihasa. You, you created, now your whole life is going to look like a but. So be careful, okay? Don't drink the gober shake and uh, be aware. Be aware when your soul protests against something, you're not aware. 
It's not that you don't have a conscience. It's not that you don't have inner navigation. It's that you're just not aware of it. You're not aware you have it. There's a voice inside that this is shit. You need to tune into that channel. The one that is true, 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 true about everything inside you. That's called Raudra Rasa. You tune into the Raudra Rasa, you'll realize it's working along with Deepatsa Rasa inside you. Tune into these two lights. Okay. Radra is in the kidneys, right? Does anyone remember? I think it is. Yeah, but you, I, I don't need to think about where it is to produce it. I'm just disgusted. Because I know who I am. I'm not confused. I'm not confused. Okay. You need to really wake up and see who are you. Proof of the pudding. <laughs> Is in the eating. Please be aware. What are you eating mentally right now? What is your mind eating? That's who you are. You are what you eat with your mind, not with your body. You become what you eat with your mind. Okay? They got it wrong. They said you are what you eat. And then the nutritionist did a little dance. But no. Sorry, nutritionist. You are what you eat with your mind. It doesn't matter what you eat with your body. It takes the form. The body that builds is the form that comes out from the mind. Be very careful. You're a walking progress card. Your body is a walking progress card of how you live your life. You don't need feedback. It's constant feedback. Why is my skin wrinkling now? I don't have a lost mobility in these joints. Why is my hair falling off? You gotta be aware. You gotta say, what am I doing with my mind to make this happen? What could it be? Oh my god. I thought my life was fantastic. I have I, I have exclusive single breed organic gober. And still it's happening. Yes, it will happen. See? Doesn't matter. Grass fed, organic single breed gober collected from a single farm. Hold your family and your job. Exclusive gober. Pure, desi, Ayurvedic, certified. So shit. This is where we are. Okay. So stop eating that pill. Okay. Any questions? Fix who you are and that's the magic. You have a lot of tools. Any questions, anyone? Questions, questions. No? No. Such a bola that I can't have questions. Okay. No problem. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Wait, I do see some comments. Huh. Yeah. Sorry for not muting, that's the only comment there. Okay. Thank you very much. Om Namah Shivaya.